I wanted to ask you about uh, to people who are more on the right wing or the constitutional so side. I'd love to hear you talk about this issue in terms of the constitutionality. Uh, uh, why this might be constitutionally unsettled what's going on. Well, there's a lot of lawsuits that are underway to challenge the various pieces of constitutionality, but what I will tell you is for asylum seekers, um, there are a number of pieces here. Number one, for asylum seekers, there's international human rights law that we are a party to, conventions, international conventions that the United States is a party to, that says that when people are seeking asylum, we need to be open to give them asylum. Number two, there's the, uh, the Convention of the Child, and the UN Human Rights Commissioner has said that the United States is violating serious rights of the child. So once again, another issue. And then there's just the whole question of can you, can you actually hold people in prisons across the country? Now, um, ICE and CBP are contracting with these facilities, but the fact that they have none of the same rights, they, they're, they're in a prison. I mean, they are, it's decent conditions compared to ICE and CBP, but it's a prison. So I think there's a lot of looking at what are the best ways to really get a national injunction around this issue and where is the place where we're going to get the most traction to be able to get them out immediately. Can you talk about uh, how you came to a position that is so passionate that you were willing to be basically arrested for it yesterday? And I know you ultimately were not arrested, but yeah. you were willing to be. Well, I've worked on immigration issues for 20 years. I started what is the largest immigrant advocacy organization in Washington state. I am an immigrant myself. It's personal and it's political. It is the country that I am now a citizen of, that I have pledged allegiance to, and that I am completely committed to, and that I was drawn to because of who we are as a country and what we've offered around the world in terms of freedom and liberty and give me your poor, your tired, your uh, 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 homeless yearning to breathe free. And so we have to make sure that we are living up to that challenge. And I do feel passionately about it because I. I really hate the fact that immigrants are being criminalized and marginalized and made to be these drains on society when in fact this country was built, unless you were Native American, your, your ancestors came from somewhere, either unwillingly on slave ships in order to build the country or to escape poverty and drought and persecution. So it, this is just what we have to do. We have to fight for the soul of our country. That's what it's Lastly, state. what would be your message to President Trump if you were actually listening right now? If President Trump were listening, I would say, think of your children, think of your wife who is an immigrant herself, think about your ancestors, and then immediately release these asylum seekers, give them the opportunity for credible fear hearings, and reunite them with their children, and stop separating families. You are bringing America down.